Testing one, two. There we go. <laughs> Testing one, two. This is why I jump on a little bit early. Okay, it looks like you guys can hear me. You should be able to hear me now. Please, somebody give me a sound check. That was a whole lot of talking for you guys to not be able to hear me. So we'll start over. Uh, it's a little early. I, again, I, I jump on a little early to make sure uh, I work out some of these kinks. But, it, but today, especially, I'm having a, a really big group. So, all right. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> All right. My apologies. I'm sure some of you guys were going, oh my God, he's going to, he's going to talk forever and not realize that uh, there's no audio. So my name is Jesse. If you're new to my painting with Jesse page here on Facebook, I'm also live streaming to YouTube at the same time. So for those of you that maybe you're joining over there, if you guys are new to the page, uh, my name is Jesse. I have been painting or teaching people to paint here on Facebook for about two years now, right about when COVID started. I jumped online and started teaching people to paint. I've probably done over 200 uh, live sessions. A whole bunch of them are still available here on the Painting with Jesse page, but the vast majority of them uh, were moved over uh, to my, I have a, a, an exclusive art membership here within Facebook. Um, I have a, about 120 people in there. Um, and so uh, most of the videos I moved over there. But anyhow, I do want to, I do try to come on about once a month to, Paint with the Painting with Jesse page. If you are interested in uh, keeping up with what happens here, make sure you guys sign up. If you haven't already, sign up to the Painting with Jesse email list. That way, what I do whenever I plan on going live here on the Painting with Jesse page, I send out an email to, to, the, to the, you know, the email list, and that way you're able to keep on top of these sessions. Um, for 2022, my goal is to come on here at least once a, once a month. Sometimes I'll be coming on twice a month. Most of my time is devoted to my exclusive art membership. It's called Finding Your Brushstroke. Again, it's here within member in uh, Facebook. Currently, the doors are closed. I will not be opening them again. Probably not till the springtime. Originally, I was planning on opening the doors uh, sometime in either late February or early March, but it takes a lot of work to plan around that, and I've got a lot going on. So doors probably will not be opening till <coughs> excuse me, sometime in the spring. But if you are part of the Painting with Jesse email list, <clears throat> I send out information about that uh, long before it happens. So in case some of you are interested, please make sure you sign up for that as well. We got about four minutes before we get started. Now, um, the email list, the information on the email list, I have, uh, there should be links in the description of the video. Um, I, in the description of this session, there's information regarding the email list. If you guys are interested and you're not on it yet, please add yourself to it. I promise I don't spam you. I don't sit there blasting you guys with all kinds of unnecessary stuff. I simply keep you guys updated whenever I'm going to do, um, you know, a painting session. Uh, sometimes I'll send out stuff about, uh, I try to send out a painting with Jesse Calendar from time to time. That's been a little harder to do, to do like I said. Most of my time is devoted to my, my art group. Uh, we do a lot of fun stuff in there. We do uh, drawing classes. We do painting classes. We do technique classes. Uh, we do little Q&A sessions. We have a lot of fun, a lot of fun in, uh, within that group. I have a really amazing group of people in there, lots of community. Uh, we just all kind of help support each other. But um, anyway, if you're interested in getting onto the Painting with Jesse email list, and you don't see the uh, link in the description of this video, simply send me an email to paintingwithjesse, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, at gmail.com, and I will get you on that list. Okay, so listen, uh, we've got quite a big group on here today. Currently, according to what the numbers that I've seen, we've got about almost 200 people uh, watching this live, which is amazing. Welcome, welcome to all of you. If you're new to the page or first time painting with me, please put it down in the comments. Hey, first time here, if you are uh, a returning painter, a returning artist, and you're painting with me again, say, hey, Jesse, I'm back. You know, um, put it in the comments. Also, if you guys want to let me know where you're joining in from, I'd love to hear it. And if you're a member of my private group called Finding Your Brushstroke, for those of you that don't know, please put it in the comments. Hey, Jesse, so-and-so, you know, and I'm a member. And, of course, the member part is so others that are watching the feed or the comments can see um, that you're a member. And also, if, if anybody asks any questions during the session, I will do my best to answer. There's a lot of you on here and, and the comments fly by pretty quickly, especially at the beginning. So I don't know that I'll get to all of your questions. I know I won't get to all the questions, but 
Those of you that are my members, if you have a chance and see some of those questions combined, you know the answer, please answer for me. If you could, I would appreciate the help. Uh, the biggest question you guys are going to see coming up is, is this session being recorded? Can you watch at a later time? And the answer is absolutely. Once the live session is over, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, the next day, the recorded session will be available here on the Painting with Jesse page and on YouTube for at least a week. Okay. After that, I remove it and put it into the membership uh, where it gets kind of stored in the vault there and um, only the members have access to it. Uh, so again, that is the most common question. If you guys see somebody ask that, please let them know. Yes, it's being recorded. You can watch it later. You can watch it tomorrow, the next day, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, during the live session, you can pause, you can back it up. If you miss something that I said, or if you're, if I'm simply going too fast for you, you can back it up. Okay. You can pause. Like I said, the only thing of course you can't do is jump ahead of me. Right. Unless of course you're on the recorded session. Um, and, and it's all possible. It's like watching a movie on Netflix. You can pause it forward and back, back it up, et cetera. There are closed captions that you can activate during the video. There should be a setting up uh, somewhere near the top of the video session here on Facebook, also on YouTube, you should be able to click on that and get closed captions going for those of you that are, you know, uh, are interested in using the closed captioning. All right. So anyway, it is one o'clock official start time. Fantastic. I probably missed a, bit of, a bunch of what I wanted to say, but that's okay. I'll get to it during the session. Here's the main thing about what we what we do here on Painting with Jesse. We have fun. Whether you're brand new to painting, whether you've been painting a long time, don't stress out about it. Have fun with the process. If you're trying to recreate something exactly like what I'm going to be doing up here, that's okay. But try not to stress about it. In the end, everyone's painting is going to look a little bit different or maybe even a lot of bit different, right? Uh, it's okay. Uh, you can change things up on this. You can change the colors. Maybe you don't have the particular blue that I'm using, or maybe you want to use a completely different blue or completely different color for the birds. You want red birds. You want black birds. You want yellow birds, et cetera, et cetera. It's your painting. Please feel free to customize. Okay. Um, I'm going to be going over the supplies here in just a moment, a recap of the supplies. If you are unaware that this event was happening and you're just jumping on and going, oh my gosh, I missed it. Uh, under the event page, you should be watching this under the event page. Up near the top there, up near the top there is a tab that says details or about. Click on that and it's going to give you all the information regarding the supplies list. Colors, brushes, canvas. Uh, there's also a link to a stencil for the birds if you need them. Okay. I'm going to be teaching you how to draw everything on here completely from scratch. We're going to start with the background, but if you need a little bit of a little bit of help by signing up to that painting with Jesse email list, you get a you get access to that stencil that you can use as a tracer automatically. Okay. But all right. I'll be looking at your questions in a moment. Like I said, there's quite a few people on here, so I don't know that I'll get to all of them. Don't stress out about that. If you have a question for me, as I scroll, as I start going through the painting process, and we're getting, we're about to jump into it right away here pretty quickly, uh, I will be looking back at the, at the questions and try to answer as many of your questions as possible. Okay? But all right. Let's see here. I see a lot of first timers. Fantastic. I'll try and go through and say hello to all of you guys here in just a moment. Let's talk about the supplies list today. Okay. First thing, and I'll change the screen in a moment. I'm going to change my screen so that this is really large and my face kind of minimizes. You don't, you don't see much of me, but we'll do that here in just a moment. <clears throat> Paper towels, very important. Well, let me turn, let me turn, uh, give me one second. I'm going to turn my camera just a touch. I'm kind of out of view, just a little tiny bit. Okay. So paper towels, very, very important. Uh, messes happen. You can also use these to clean your brushes. So paper towels. Okay, I'm going to go over the brushes that I'm going to be using today. You do not have to have the exact brushes. Whenever I post the brush sizes in the supplies list, those are just suggestions. As long as you're close, you're going to be fine. The biggest brush that I'm using, actually, I'm going to go ahead and change the screen now. Give me one second. It's going to help you guys see Flip that. There we go. That's what we want. We don't want my big noggin in the way. So there we go. That's what we want. Biggest brush in my group is a one inch flat brush. Okay. If you've got, a, I've got a 16 by 20 inch canvas. This may seem like a small brush to use. I'm going to be using this brush to paint in the background. I like those streaky lines and the smaller, slightly smaller brush 
helps create those streaky lines in there. You don't have to have streaks in yours. You can use a bigger brush. Sometimes I'll use a two inch flat brush to paint in my background. The larger the background, the bigger the brush, the faster the work I can get through. Okay, so one inch flat brush. Okay, and nothing fancy. These are all these are all just synthetic bristle brushes. Um, they are good brushes, not excellent, but they're pretty good. This is a half inch flat brush. Okay, I'm putting up my hand there just for reference. This is a little smaller. This is about a three quarters inch. Uh, sorry, this is about a, um, a little more than a than a quarter inch flat brush. This is like this is a number ten flat. Okay. Then some smaller brushes. I've got a number four flat shader. Okay, what's important with these brushes is that they get nice and skinny at the top. And I know some of you guys are chopping at the bit to get going. This is about the same size of a brush. This is number four. This is a brick, flat brick. Don't worry about it. These are essentially used for about the same thing. So don't stress about it again if you, I'm just showing you different options. And I know some of you with kiddos are going, come on, let's get going. My, my, my children are, you know, they want to get moving. We will here in just a moment, folks. So this is a smaller brush. This is a number this is a number three flat. Again, just different size flat brushes. And then I've got a, I've got a couple of skinny brushes that we're going to be using to make the little skinny stuff. Okay, I've got a number three round brush and a number zero round brush. Okay, you can have a you can have a zero liner brush. Um, anything that's nice and pointy and skinny like that to uh, to to get some of that nice detail work done. Now, here's my paint palette. Here's my basic paint palette that I'm going to be using. These are the colors, okay, that, um, hold on one second, folks, let me, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my laptop, which is where I'm monitoring the feed, okay? So I've got a basic green, okay, some a basic red, basic pink, basic yellow. Uh, this is an earth brown, but any brown will do. When I say basic, all, I'm, all I mean by that is pretty much any of these, any colors similar to this is going to be fine. I've got some white and I've got some blue. And of course, I'm going to be using a lot more of these colors, but I wanted to show you my palette. Um, I use Today, I'm going to be using paper plates to mix colors on. Okay, so there's that. Now, the glitter, for those of you that are going to be using glitter, as you guys can see, there's some shine right here on my bluebirds. I've got some glitter that's caused by glitter. There's, I've got some red glitter, green, uh, pretty much uh, whatever colors you guys have, if you're going to be using glitter. Um, it's perfectly fine. These are the colors that we got. I got some gold. I've got some pearl. Okay. I've got some more pearl of a different brand. There's, all these are, are glitter bits floating around in glue. Okay. Now, if you don't have glitter, don't worry about it. You can always add this later. This is something that we add at the very end. We are going to be painting for a little while today. If you can't stay the entire time, do not stress. Paint for as long as you can and then come back and paint with the recorded session. All right, everybody, let me take a look really quickly. I'm going to see if I can answer any questions that might be popping up. Like I said, there's probably a gazillion of them, but uh, I won't be able to get through all of them. All right, Penny Colt, woo, one of my members, one of my uh, uh, art membership people. I love glitter, she says. I know, Penny, I know you do. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love glitter? Peggy Arsenault, welcome back, Peggy. Yep, it's been a little while. Let's, uh, it's been a minute since we painted together. Fantastic. Angie Norheim. Hi, Angie. How's it going? Cindy Long, first time from Colorado. Awesome, awesome. Joe Hill, morning from Campbell River, Vancouver Island. Woo, British Columbia, Canada. Woo, fantastic. I know we have some people from Puerto Rico in here. We got Barbara Joe Baker from Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's see, Laverne Davenport also on here. All right, everybody, we're going to get going. We're going to get moving now. I'll go back through these uh, comments and um, jump in and say hello and all that other stuff. Here's how I do this. I'm going to show you how to do a step on, on my end, and then I give you a little time to implement the step on your end. You can um, ask, ask questions and stuff as you're going along, but you'll see me when I'm looking over at my screen. Again, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking down at my laptop, which is where I'm monitoring the feed, the questions, etc. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the background. We're going to paint the background in. Oh, really quickly, I also have a blow dryer. Okay, I'm going to be using this blow dryer to speed up the drawing process in between some of the steps. Okay, if you don't have a blow dryer, don't worry about it. You work with what you've got. Um, and there was one other thing I was about. Oh, when I do the drawing part of it, when I draw the birds, when I draw maybe some of the branches, I may be using a piece of chalk. Okay, I may be using a pencil. Uh, whatever you're going to be using for your drawing part of it, you know, 
uh, use what you've got. Okay. Again, use what you've got. Don't stress out if you don't have everything exactly like what I, what I have over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to paint in the background. Now I'm going to take a plate here. I'm going to mix some white because it's a really nice sky blue color, really light blue color. It's going to be more white paint than anything else. Now I often mix my types of paint. I use craft paints. I use some higher quality paint. These are all acrylic paints, by the way. Um, so I'm mixing some white, basically a, a version of titanium white and some phthalo blue. Okay. Phthalo blue is a very strong, powerful color. This is from my Liquitex uh, Basics collection. It's a really nice uh, paint. I'll be mixing the two. Craft paint tends to be a little bit uh, less steadfast than a nicer paint like the Liquitex is, but the combination of the two gives me kind of a happy medium. So let me grab my big brush here, my big one inch brush. Now I'm going to mix these two colors together, but I'm going to take a little bit of water. Oh, you're going to need a water cup. Okay. Rinse cup. You use it to rinse your brushes, but you also use it to take some water and mix it in with the paint. So here we go. Here we go. So a little bit of white. Now, some blue. Now, this is a real, it's going to be a nice white. Which one did I grab? I did. This is a nice bright blue. I, I want to make sure that I got my phthalo blue. This is going to be a little bit more of a brilliant blue than what I've got on the original painting. It's a little, that's a little more sub subdued of a blue, but not by much. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is make sure that I'm mixing enough to cover my entire background. Okay. It's very important when I mix a color then I mix enough to cover my entire background or the entire area that I'm going to be painting. The last thing I want to do is run, run out of my paint partway through and have to remix some more. So give me one second. Just going to grab a little bit of white, a little more white to mix it in. Now, it may be a little hard, especially as a beginner, to know how much paint you need. It's always better until you get a better gauge of, uh, for, of it to mix more than you're going to need. So here we go. This should do it. This should be enough. Actually, I'm going to grab a little tiny bit more. Questions, comments, all that good stuff. Please put it down in the comment section and I'll get to it ASAP. All right, here we go. So I have a swirly combination here. It's not all one perfectly blended color. I can see some blues, some darker areas, some lighter areas. That's kind of what I want. I want a little bit, little bit of streakiness in here. So here's what we're doing. Again, folks, if you see any questions, especially my members, if you see any questions come up that you know the answer to, please help and answer those questions for me. There's a whole bunch of you on here right now, and it's a little difficult. I don't have a, I don't have a um, moderator to go through the questions for me. Eventually, I will get a mon moderator for these larger sessions. When I'm painting in, in uh, with my private group, there's much smaller sessions. So it's easy to keep track of all the questions. But when we do these really large groups, it's a lot harder to do so. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm taking these long brush strokes all the way across. These long brush strokes create a smoother finish. Okay. Um, so I'm just taking these long, long brush strokes, run it all the way across my canvas. Again, it's nice to have a little bit of streakiness in my paint. If you want some more of these little white areas like I have on the original, we'll add those in just a moment. Again, folks, if you're new to the page, first time you're painting with me, please let me know. Okay. Also, if you're painting, maybe you're painting in a group with your kiddos. I'd love to see, I love, I'd love to see children on here painting along with us. You could put their names in the comments and I will say hello to them. Give a nice little shout out. <clears throat> okay. But again, let me know where you're painting from. Maybe who you're painting with. Is it a first time? Are you your first time painting? Are you coming back? Again, I plan on having at least one live session on the painting with Jesse per month. Get on a little bit of a steady schedule. I used to do seven, eight sessions a month, something like that back during 2020 and then early 2021. But, um, you know, things have gotten a little bit busy. Okay, so there's my entire background covered up. Now I want some of these little white areas that you see kind of uh, peeking, peeking out through the paint. I'm going to take a little bit of white. 
<clears throat> just find a little spot on my plate. Do that. Now I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna do this. Just gonna grab a little bit of that. So there's there's some white on my brush. Okay, now what I'll do is I'm gonna come in here and just find little spots where I want to add these. And in a moment, I'm gonna blend these into the background. Okay, my, my background is nice and wet. So I so it makes it easy to come in here and just spread some of this paint throughout. And I just kind of find little spots. They almost look like little clouds off in the distance, perhaps. If you want, you can actually make them look, look like clouds, right? Maybe you really want them to look like clouds. So make them into little clouds. Otherwise, just streak them. Kind of do a little, little of this. What you see me doing here, watch how I'm holding the brush. This is an old beat up brush. I've been using it for a long time. but still nice quality, still works. For those of you that are newer to painting, and maybe for some of you that, you, that have been painting for a little while, one thing you can do to make your painting life, your experiences a little bit easier is to get some decent supplies. I don't, it doesn't mean you have to go out and break the bank, but some decent brushes go a long way to making your experience and your results much better. Now I'm just grabbing a little bit of my blue, okay, a little bit of my blue, and just kind of grabbing it and also kind of streaking it here and there. Remember, folks, everybody's results are going to vary a little bit. So don't stress out. If yours, if your background is looking a little different than mine or a lot different than mine, it's okay. As long as it looks like a nice background, maybe yours has a, a sharper, shorter lines. Maybe you're brushing in different directions. Maybe you're going up and down. All good. In just a moment, I'm going to paint the edges of my canvas. I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch canvas, as I've mentioned. I like to paint my edges usually, meaning the, the top, the sides. I know some of you guys are painting on a multimedia pad, mixed media pad. Or perhaps you're doing it on a wood board. Or you're doing it on uh, a canvas board. So maybe you don't have edges like, like I do. But this is an option. You don't have to, even if you're working on a canvas, you don't have to paint your edges. Some people like to, especially if you plan on hanging it up. Maybe yours comes out really nice and you're proud of your work and you want to hang it up. So you paint your edges. I'm not worried about the bottom edge since I'm working on, a, on an easel. I'll do the very bottom, the underneath edge last. Because if I do it now, it'll glue my canvas to the easel. You don't want that. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, let me take a look at the comments. I'm looking, I'm going to be looking down at the comments now. I'm going to try to keep up with all of them. There are 236, about 240 of you jump on right now painting with me. So let's see. <clears throat> Sounds good, Sandra. Yep, absolutely. Go back and watch the, uh, the recorded session. Oops, let's see, I missed a Tina. How's it going, Tina? Good. Thank you, Tina, for answering that question. Fantastic. Again, folks, especially if you're one of my members or even if you're, you've are you been painting with me for a while under the Painting with Jesse page and you know an answer to a question that somebody comes up with, please put it down. Uh, let them know. You know. Respond to their questions. Let's see. <clears throat> Paula Evans, first time painter here, but have some experience joining in from Indiana. Welcome, Paula. Thank you for joining in today. So in just a moment, I'm going to take the blow dryer and uh, dry that background. First time painter says, Sandra, going to try it with my 70-year-old mini-me. Hi to you and your 70-year-old mini-me. <clears throat> so somebody asked about preventing paint from drying out. Would, do you mean the like the paint on your plate like this? Is that what you mean? Because if you... There are some, if you're working with acrylic paint, acrylic paint dries very quickly. There are these things called wet palettes that you can use. I'll grab mine in a little while and show you guys. Just remind me. I'm not using it today. But if you are using a wet palette, I'll, if I have a chance, I'll describe what it is. I'll show you what it looks like. It basically has a wet sponge in there. You have a, um, a, uh, a piece of basically palette paper on top. And you put, you put your, paint, your paint on top of that. It's a breathable membrane, basically. And it takes in a little bit of the water from the sponge. And so your 
paint. It keeps your paint from drying. Okay. All right. Let me jump in here and use my blow dryer. Again, I'm going to dry, dry this background. It'll only take me just a, maybe a minute to do so. So bear with me. There we go. So another thing that you can do to prevent your paint from drying, if you don't have a, um, a wet palette, you can use something like one of these little spritzers. So let's say that I've got a mixture of paint like my here. So here, for example, let's say I've got my paint all mixed in on my plate. What I can do is I'll take this. Let's say I want to preserve that for a while. <clears throat> now, this is a spritzer. So it's a very thin mist of paint. A mister. Sorry, not a spritzer. A mister. It, puts on a, spreads a really nice thin layer of paint. Okay, so I can do that and just keep my paint wet also on my canvas. If I wanted to keep my canvas wet for a little longer, I can spray this, right? I've dried this, so it's too late, but if I want to keep my paint wet, let's say I'm planning on blending a little bit, I can spray this. But these are really tiny, tiny, fine droplets of water. If you If you're using a sprayer that actually shoots out big droplets of water, you're gonna make a mess. <laughs> water running down your canvas <clears throat> and so that can be a little a little bit messy all right let me take a look at uh any more questions or comments and then we're moving on michelle sign good afternoon thank you for teaching us from pennsylvania you are very welcome michelle my pleasure thank you for be for being here today carol uh from beirut hi carol how's it going thank you for joining from beirut how huh? might be the first time i've had somebody from beirut but I, we do have people from all over the world so that's fantastic Robert Hosler from North Carolina. How's it going, Robert? Okay. Lacey, uh, Melanie Phillips says Lacey is 10 and joining from Tennessee. Painting is her favorite thing to do. Welcome, Lacey. Welcome, welcome. Painting is a lot of fun for sure. All right, everyone. So here's what we're going to do next. We're going to be painting in our tree. Now, don't stress out, especially as a newer painter. I don't want you freaking out going, oh, my God, he's getting into the tree already. What we're going to do, depending on the size of your canvas, listen closely to what I'm about to say, because this is kind of crucial. I've got a, you know, whatever canvas size you want, you're going to want to put your tree over to the side, right? You're going to have your branches coming out. You can have your birds over here somewhere. Um, you're going to have your tree over to the side, to the side somewhere. You want to start skinny with your tree. Make your, your tree skinnier than, than what you think. You're going to want it to be at the end. So, for example, let's say that I envision, uh, and of course, I've got a reference over here, so I can just kind of look at that. But let's say that I envision my tree is going to be, the edge of my tree is going to be over here somewhere, right? Um, what I'm going to do is make it a little bit smaller than that. The reason why I make it smaller is because once I've got it up there, I might be surprised and go, oh, my gosh, that's really big. I didn't mean to make it as big. Um, if you make it too big, that's harder to fix. So we start small and we can always make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to grab me another uh, another plate here. I'm going to go through quite a few plates today, I think. I'm going to take some brown. Again, I'm using earth brown. Okay, any brown that you've got is fine. If, you, if it's a really dark brown that you're using and you want to lighten it up, you can add a little bit of yellow to it, a little bit of white to it. Okay, so my earth brown right here, I'm going to take a little bit of just basic yellow. This is, now this, this paint here that I'm using is from Artist Loft. I picked this up at Michael's. It's a decent quality uh, paint to use for basic projects. Okay. Uh, so again, just so you guys are, are, you guys can see what I'm using. Now I'm going to start with the same big one inch brush that I use to paint the background. Just going to rinse it out a little bit. I'm using my rinse cup to do this. Now in between steps, anytime I'm not using a brush that has paint in it, I stick it in my water cup. I want to leave that in there. So it doesn't dry out on me. Acrylic paint can damage your brushes if it dries out on your bristles, okay? You can damage your bristles, so <clears throat> you don't want that to happen. So I'm just going through here. I'm taking some paper towels, removing any of the excess paint that's in my brush. I'm going to take some brown and a little bit of yellow to lighten it up. I want kind of a, kind of a golden brown, maybe. Again, if you don't have... Um, 
you have a really dark brown, you can use a little white also. Chalk tends to make, when you use white to, to lighten something up, it tends to make it a little bit chalky, but, but it works. It still works. All right, there's the mixture that I want for my tree. Here's what I'm going to do. Again, I want you to watch closely, pay attention, very important. So again, let's say I imagine my tree coming out all the way over here. I'm going to take the skinny part of my brush, and I'm just going to draw a line that goes like this. Again, I want it a little skinnier than what I envision my tree to be. Skinny can be fixed and made bigger very easily. If you make it too big and you want it smaller, that is harder to fix. Okay? So let's say I go like this. <clears throat> now there's a tiny little bit of an angle on my line, slight little angle. So notice it's a little wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So whoops, 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 knocking stuff over here. Give me a second while I readjust. Okay, there we go. So there's my line. I can come in here now and I can just long brush strokes up and down. Nice long brush strokes. When we did the background, we brushed left to right or right to left horizontally, in other words. Here we're going to go up and down. I want some streakiness in here. It's going to help me um, create kind of those lines later on, a little bit of a bark kind of a look textured tree okay so now i can look at my tree i can take a step back i can uh take a step back and look at my tree and go okay do i need to make it a little bit bigger i sure do okay i sure do just a little bit now i can add to it i can come over here and just get a little make it a little bit wider again you don't want to move through this step too quickly you can end up with a really thick tree and that again is just harder to fix. It can be fixed, but that's a lot harder to do so. Once I'm done with this step, we're not gonna be adding all those lines or anything, any of, the, any of those details in just yet. That comes later. Okay, now in just a moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a blow dryer and dry what I've got on here for my tree. And then um, we will, I'll go through those questions, any questions, comments you may have, and we'll laugh. Uh, We'll go from there. All right. You guys have a couple of minutes to catch up on that step. As I look at some of your comments and questions, let me scroll down. What's happening, Melinda Shaver? Melinda says, hello, lovely people. Hello, Melinda. And yes, hello, lovely people. So if you have brushes that are shedding, somebody, I noticed somebody's responding, Tina Barton. Artkoski Parks, uh, one of my awesome members, is responding um, to somebody who asked about shedding brushes. So there are some brush. If you have shedding brushes, what that typically says is that normally those are just lower quality. Sometimes when you pick up something like from the 99 cent store, uh, there's just certain brushes that are even nicer quality brushes can shed or old brushes can shed. Okay. Uh, the brushes that I use are synthetic bristle either golden taclon. I believe there's also white taclon. Uh, basically, there's these synthetic bristle brushes that are really sturdy. They last a long time, and they you can you know they don't shed uh, very often. Every once in a while, you'll see one that sheds. But there are other types that um, other types of brushes that are good for texturing that sometimes shed a little bit more. So it just depends on um, you know the type of brush that you're using. But if you'd like, if you have any questions around that, send me a message here on Facebook. I'll be more than happy to answer you. Maria says, my tree came out a bit bigger. That's okay, Maria. It can be a little bigger. It's okay. Sounds good. What's happening, Brandy? Josh Woodruff. How's it going? Welcome back. How's it going? How's it going? All right. Again, in just a moment, I'm going to take and dry what I've got here on the canvas. You got it, Leela. My, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Now, again, folks. Uh, if your tree is bigger than this and it's, I mean, it's okay. It doesn't have to be the same size as mine. It can be bigger. It can also be skinnier. The main thing is to leave yourself enough room over here for what's coming next, the birds, the branches, all that good stuff. Okay. And so I'm actually not going to dry this. I was, I was thinking I was going to dry this. I'm going to get right into creating the base for this branch. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, again, you want to listen closely to this part. I'm going to create this branch to about right here, okay? So, again, I'm going to come across and stop about right here. 
All right. Now, just like with our tree, we want to go really skinny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to change over to one of my smaller brushes, maybe this number 10 or half inch flat brush. Okay. Um, I could also use maybe my flat shader. Actually, this, is, this one's a brick, number four brick. Okay. Um, the point is, just like with our big tree, same color that we just used, um, I'm going to make a really skinny line. You can draw this first if you want. You don't have to use, um, you don't have to use uh, a brush to do this. You can take a piece of chalk and maybe draw it first. But we're going to go skinny, skinny. So if I was going to draw this, this branch, this big branch starts down here at about maybe a quarter of the way down. If you're planning to put a little branch here at the bottom, you want to leave that little space below. Okay, we're going to go like this. Now, really skinny. I'm, gonna, I'm imagining a line that comes right down the middle and it kind of comes up like this. So somewhere over here, I'm just going to kind of do this. Comes over. And then it's going to start to curve up a little bit. Okay. I don't want to go too far over to the side. And this is about where I'm going to stop. I'm going to be putting in the birds here in just a little bit. But first, I want to put the base down. Now, if you're using chalk, chalk is really easy to work with because if I don't like what I've got, I can go through and erase that. Chalk is really easy to erase. And this is just basic, basic chalk. If you have to erase, you don't want to brush really hard on the canvas. Um, you would just take, simply take a little bit of a, you know, a little tiny bit of water on your paper towel, for example, on a paper towel. If I want to do a little bit of erasing, for example, I can just come in here and lightly. And there goes my, there goes my chalk. It's gone. Okay. That's the beauty of working with chalk. If you're working with a pencil or colored, you know, a regular pencil, colored pencil, et cetera, that can be fairly easy to erase as well. Here we go, though. Again, remember what I said, nice and skinny, small brush. I'm going to do this. I'm creating the general shape for my branch. Okay, I'm going to come up, kind of angles up a little bit, and about like that. Okay, the reason we start skinny is the same reason we start skinny with the tree. Once I've got the general shape and I like it, I can go ahead and start adding a little bit of shape to it. Now I can come in here and maybe make it, I'm going to go to the top here like this. Okay, it comes up, comes over. My trees are going to, my birds are going to be sitting over here somewhere. It's going to come up, angle back up, and maybe stop right there. Now I look at that. Is that thick enough? Is that too skinny? You know, I can take a step back. Always take a little step back. Look at what you've got and decide. Okay. I can add a little bit right here. Right? My branches tend to be thicker where they connect to the tree. They get skinnier as they, you know, as they um, branch out from here, from your tree. Okay. So, again, just give your tree branch a little bit of shape. Once you've got your shape in place, now you can go in here and paint the rest of your tree. Just color that in. Okay, paint that in. So back to my big brush just to cover this a little faster. Just gonna go through here. I'm using the skinny part of my brand of my brush. I'm not using the big broad side. Okay, holding it like this. Your tools are very important. Okay. Uh, if you've got, for example, if you've got shedding brushes, that can be frustrating. I get it. Do the best with what you've got. And then just know that if you want to continue to paint, you want brushes that don't shed very easily. Yeah, it's, it's tough to have to go through there and start having to pick out, you know, um, bristles from your canvas as you're, as you're painting. I get it. But unfortunately, if that's all you've got, that's what you've got to work with. Just go with it and do your best. Okay. So there's my branch. Now I'm going to take go over and look at your comments really quickly. And then in a moment, we're going to dry this up and move on to the next step. Okay, coming down. <clears throat> Christine, that's okay. If your canvas is sideways, if you got a long ways, it'll still work. No big deal. Okay, no big deal. Let's see. Let's see. Coming up, coming up. Uh, let's see. So these are good for, for, yep. I'm going to be leaving the, again, I'm leaving the, uh, I'm going to be leaving the recording up for a week. Uh, and if you need to come back to it, if you're painting along with me today and you're not able to finish, you know, the whole piece, 
Don't worry about it. Paint for as long as you can. Come back later tonight, tomorrow, and watch the recorded session. Now, the recorded session, you're going to find it under the live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page at the very top. There's a little tab that says live. You click on that. That's where you're going to find the recorded session. All right? All right. So let me dry this. We're not adding any detail to our trees. We're, uh, right now, it's just kind of a flat color. We're going to go through and blow dry this really quickly. And then we're going to get into our birds. Okay, we're going to get into those birds. Everybody take a deep breath. It's going to be, it's going to be easy or it's going to be okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Let's see what else we got. <clears throat> got quite a nice group today fantastic amazing again thank you all for joining me today tracy toe says hi jesse tracy from ontario canada i'm still working and just popped on to ask if this will be available later absolutely uh you may have asked this already but i don't have time to scroll through yep it sure will tracy it will be okay um again folks that's the most common uh, question that's gonna gonna pop up the weather is fantastic actually it's a little tiny bit overcast today uh, but still beautiful. Nice temperature. I love it. I love it. I'm over here in Southern California. For those of you that, that uh, may not know, um, a little tiny bit overcast today, but really, really nice. Let's see. What else do we got? All right, everybody. Looks like and I'm just I'm just scrolling back here, here really quickly. See if I missed anything. I'm sure I've missed plenty. All right. So what is next? We're going to go ahead and draw the birds now. For those of you that are using the stencil or the tracer, right, that I, that I uh, made available for those of you that requested it, if you don't have it and you want to use it, when you sign up to the Painting with Jesse email list, and again, there's a link, there should be a link to that in the description of this video, or you can email or you can message me directly. I can send you the link. You get access to the stencil. Um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be tracing it on tracing it on if you haven't already. Um, now's the time to start putting that on your canvas. Again, in just a moment, we're going to walk through those steps and create and, and draw them. Now, I want to make sure you guys understand, I'm not going to be walking you through how to trace it on. Um, that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a session on how to transfer over an image to a canvas, as in when you're using a stencil or a tracer, a traceable, there are different ways to do it. We're not going to go through that today. It's going to, that would take much too long to incorporate that into this session if you're going to be drawing along with me though you want to get your stuff ready again either a uh, pencil or a piece of chalk i'm going to be doing mine with a piece of chalk so let's get right to it i promise you it's not going to be anything crazy we break down the little birds into a few basic steps as long as you're you know good at listening as long as you're you're good at kind of mimicking you're going to be okay now you may want to practice this first on a scratch piece of paper, et cetera, if you're going to be drawing freehand. Okay. So let's take a look at our birds here. Now, if you're going to be adding more birds to your painting, maybe you got a little bird up on top. If you're recreating your little family, right? We talked about that. Maybe you know, your son or your daughter are going to be over there, or your grandson or, or mom and dad, who knows however many birds you're going to be adding to yours. There's plenty of space for that. You got another branch over here. You got a space over here. I'm going to you can use the same techniques that I'm using now to draw those birds as well. But we're going to start with this guy right in here. Now we're going to break down the birds in a, into a few parts. First part right in here, this section in here, okay, is one part. We got the head and then we've got the tail. There's three parts to these birds, pretty basic. We're going to start with this part right in here. So how big is your bird going to be? You may want to kind of just say, okay, my big, my big bird is going to be maybe this tall. So I'll mark off the top. Again, I'm using chalk, easy to erase. And maybe the bottom, the tail is going to be over here somewhere. Now that may be a little too big. Make sure you look, take a little step back, look at it from a distance, and then you decide. Once you're good with what you've got, we're going to start in with a tail. And all I'm going to do is come up almost like a little triangle. Okay, we go like this. Okay, we're creating a little triangle, kind of a triangle-ish shape. 
Folks, you can pause the video. You can back it up. If any of this is unclear and you want to repeat the steps, please back it up and go over it again. Basically, just let me let me maybe darken this a little bit more. I'm just breaking down our bird into a few simple steps. That's the tail right there for the for the big bird. Now we're going to draw in the body part. So from right this little corner, I'm going to come up, kind of go over like this, go up. Okay. That's that part of the bird. If yours is a little bit different than mine, again, don't stress about it. Wait till you're you got the finished product, the finished product here as we're drawing, and then you can make little adjustments to it. Now the other side, this part right here, from right here, just want to come out a little bit, come back up, and then bring it back in into back inwards towards where the head's going to be. So here at the top, the main thing is that it tapers in just a little bit okay again the beauty of working with chalk is that you can erase now the head basically kind of a kind of a rounded rounded part just comes up turns over okay and then comes over maybe it drops down a little bit it's up to you if you want to give your bird a little beak a little beak right there would be would be perfect now this line, we don't worry about it. I just kind of use that <clears throat> as a demonstration. Now here's a close-up, okay? A little close-up of that bird. Again, nothing fancy, nothing fancy. Three parts, the bottom, the tail. You don't even need that part right there. You can just kind of make that pointy, okay? Then we got the, the main part of the body and then the head, okay? Again, if you need to practice on a scratch piece of paper, please do so. Other bird. Okay, on this other little bird, we can start with the main part of the body first. It's, it's just, it's just going to be a little easier if we do it that way. The bodies are touching, so maybe from right in here, I'm just going to come up a little bit. That's that part right there. Okay, and I'm not worried about the head right now. I'm just going to go back across. Okay, about the same width. So this part here is about the same width as that. Maybe this bird's a little shorter. Maybe it's a little, you know, it's... It's the smaller of the two birds, so again, still working on the on the body. Goes back in, goes across, and then up. Okay, that right there is that right there. Again, folks, don't stress. It's always easier to do this stuff when you're relaxing. You just it's not that big of a deal. If your birds are bigger, taller, skinnier, wider, all good. Okay, we're gonna put in the little tail now from right here. Tail goes down. This is the hardest part of this whole thing. Once you get through this, it's all down, downhill <laughs> in a good way. It's all down from here. Again, in a good way, in a good way. There we go, little tail. Okay, we got the tail in place. Now we're going to go up to the, to the head. Now the head, it's almost like a little dome. Looks kind of like a little helmet shape. So from right here, there's a little corner. Is going to go up a little bit, turn it forward just a touch. It is a little bit shorter. It doesn't go quite as high as the other bird. It can if you want it to. Comes back over and then comes down. Okay. Two little birds sitting in a tree. <laughs> right? We don't need these lines right here. We can remove those. We're going to be painting over all of this here in a little while. We're not worried about that right now. Okay. Get your two little birdies in place. Always when you're when you're assessing, take a little step back. Look at your birds from a distance. Look at what you've got from a distance now. It's easier to see if you need to make any corrections. Um, okay, so take a little step back. For example, maybe this little guy right here needs to, maybe I need to make the tail a little skinnier. I think it would look better if I make the tail just a touch skinnier. So I take my paper towel, lightly, lightly, with a little tiny bit of water, right, as you saw me do. I just lightly touch this, remove the chalk. Now I can make a little adjustment. I'm going to make it just a little skinnier, okay? Maybe, maybe the body's a little bit thicker, so I just bring this line out. I don't have to erase it. The, the original line that I made, I just make a little adjustment just like that. If I wanted to, I could have little tiny beaks. I'm not going to add those. If I want, maybe if my birds are kind of looking out in that direction so you don't see the beaks, but you could add little tiny beaks if they're facing each other. Maybe they're even giving each other a little peck, okay? 
But okay, let me see if you if you got any questions for me. As soon as our birds are done, we're going to start picking things up a little bit, okay? There we go, down to the bottom. Awesome, Stacy Smith, first time painters, Leanne and Stacy from Hamilton. Thanks, it's awesome so far. Thank you, Stacy, and thank you, Stacy and Leanne. I uh, really appreciate you both being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that's on here. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Christina says, "Can you show how to draw the bird?" So hopefully you got that. How, how, I'm assuming that's what you mean. The steps that I just outlined. You can back the video if you need to go over it again. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Have fun using the the paints you have. Says Rose Marie Alonzo, one of um, one of my awesome members. Absolutely, Rose. Have fun with what you've got. Do the best with, with what you've got. Don't stress. You don't want to make this a stressful experience, especially, especially if you're newer. Have fun with it. Roll with it. See what turns out. And if you decide you want to do it again, you have a little bit of experience to work with. Okay? So have fun with the whole process. Yep. Just a, all I'm using so far are uh, flat brushes. Okay? All I'm using are, are basic flat brushes right now, except for these two little round ones. And I'm going to be using round pointy ones. They're called round brushes, but they're pointy. They're going to be used for detail work. But basically, these are all just synthetic bristle flat brushes that I've used so far. I've only used two brushes at the moment. My one-inch flat brush and my half-inch flat brush. Let's see. Yep, you can use whatever colors you want. Okay, have fun with it again. No, absolutely not. Stephanie says, Stephanie Cordero says, uh, is it too late to get the stencil? Absolutely not. If you request on the event page, there's a link to it. If you don't see it in the description of the video up on top, and I point up as if it's over my head, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Look in the description of the video. There should be a link there. Otherwise, on the event page, where probably most of you are watching this on, if you go read the details, there's a link. It'll get you access to that stencil. It's free. You just sign up for the Painting with Jesse email list and you get the stencil just like that. Okay. All right. So our little birds are right here. What I want to do now is create the rest of the little branches. Okay. Um, we're going to start with the, with the main one that comes across here. The two that create our heart shape. And again, if it helps you to draw it first, I highly recommend taking the step to actually draw first. Again, I'm going to be using my chalk. I'm going to go through here. So the little heart, when the two branches come over right above their heads, if you were to draw a little line above, it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly on top, but that where those two branches cross, sits right somewhere above their heads. What you want to do is you want to put where you want those to be. Where do you want those two branches to cross? Somewhere right about right in here, okay? And the reason I'm starting with a little dot it's easy for me to take a step back and look at it, and then I, I can visualize, is that, that going to work for me? If not, I can adjust it. Is that too low? This little dot is about the center where the two branches cross. Is that too low? Is that too high? It's kind of entirely up to you. Um, from the top of my canvas, I probably have about four inches, three and a half inches for, uh, to where I'm putting that little dot. Now what I can do is this, starting with this one right here that comes across. I'm just going to go going to be over here somewhere it comes over I start creating my little heart shape maybe if I got that little branch that sticks out kind of does that okay kind of does that and then connects like that skinny skinny easy to correct with chalk and it'll, it'll it's kind of similar if you're using if you're using pencil and I don't have a pencil in front of me I have to go around to get one uh, if I was using pencil Regular pencil, you can erase it with your you know, with an eraser. Um, just don't go too hard on your pencil. If you go too hard on that on that pencil, you'll make really dark lines, and that's harder to fix. But you, you can also erase pencil with paper towel and a little bit of water. So again, just rub lightly. Other side over here. Now, if any of this, if you would rather do this with chalk, for example, and you don't have chalk then watch perhaps or um and, and come back you know, watch today and maybe come back and do do this in chalk later okay so here's our other branch that comes comes over kind of drops down like this i don't want to get too close to my tree because i want to have a little branch that kind of sticks out right there so 
kind of gauge it so that it comes around like that. Now, I've got a heart there, but I'm not happy with it. It's too narrow on this side. <clears throat> so, easily corrected. Paper towel, right? A little bit of water. Don't want to overdo it on the water, and we don't want to overdo it on the pressure, depending on the kind of paint that you're using. I know it's not all acrylic is exactly the same. Some acrylic paint is easier to remove from a canvas than other types. So you want to err on the side of caution and not rub too hard. Otherwise, you will remove some of the background as well, and we don't want to do that. It can That can be fixed as well. You can always go back in there and add more blue paint to the background, but why, uh, why go through that if we don't have to? Okay, so there's my little correction to that. And this is still kind of wet. So as I come across with my chalk, it may be a little hard for that chalk to, to uh, uh, adhere to the canvas, we'll see. So again, I just want to stick my heart out a little further out, make it a bit wider, and there we go. Okay, there's my heart. Now I can come in here and add all those little extra branches, like that little one that's going to go up there. I'm not worried about the leaves. Just going to add a few of the little branches that pop out. Make your lines skinny. We're going to be painting over those in just a moment. Time is going to fly, folks. Uh, we are painting. We're going to be painting for a couple of hours today, two and a half hours or so. Time will fly. Before you know it, we're going to be at the very end of this. I am going to be asking you to share your paintings with uh, my page. I would love to see your masterpieces. And we're all done. Towards the end, I'll talk a, talk a little bit about how to do that. But I would love for everyone to see what you guys painted. It's kind of fun to see what everyone else comes out comes out with. Okay, once you've got your heart in place, yes, I know there's other branches. For example, I got another branch over here, and everybody's gonna have branches in different spots, right? Some of you're gonna have more branches than others. Um, some of you're gonna have less. Some of you're gonna have more than me, etc. But I'm just drawing in the basic shapes of some of these. We'll refine those later. Once you've got your heart in place, you want to look at it. Look at your heart. Let's take a step back and go, okay, is that what I want? Cool. If it needs to be corrected, make your corrections before we paint. Once you're here, now we can go ahead and add a layer of paint to the birds. The reason why we didn't paint the bird, add paint to the birds before we made, made our heart is if you made your birds too big or too small, etc., you would only be able to tell once you have your heart in place. Okay, now you can go in there and make your corrections. Oh, one more branch. Let's add the skinny branch down here at the bottom. Just comes across and go like that. That's the main part of that branch. Skinny comes out like that. Maybe a little one there, a little one there. Okay. But all right, who's having a good time? Let me know in the comments if you're having a good time. Let me look at your questions, comments, etc. I hope you're all having an amazing time. I know I am. There you go, Steve. Yeah, the chalk is awesome. Chalk is really awesome. Um, oftentimes, we'll go through and draw an entire piece with chalk and then paint in, you know, paint over it. Sometimes you have little edges left over where you can see when you paint, like when I paint the inside of the birds, I might have some chalk left over on the edges if I didn't cover the entire outline, but that's easily removed for the most part, okay? But, um, you know, there's all kinds of different options. Awesome, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? Thank you for joining in today, Lisa. Annette Wilson, how's it going? Becky Robson, how's it going? Becky Robson, cassette. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Might have to uh, put them on here just a little bit. What's happening, Tina? Two Hill Davis. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If I mess up any of your names, please forgive me. Uh, this is First time here. Love this project. Fantastic, Tina. Glad to hear that you're having a good time. Thank you for joining in today. But all right. Hi, Elisa. How are you? How are you? It's been a minute. Haven't seen you in the membership in a little while, probably because you've been busy like everybody else, like so many of us, but happy that you're hanging out painting today. All right. So let's paint. Let's paint our birds. So you get to pick the color of your birds. Maybe your birds are like I said, maybe they're red, maybe they're black, brown, etc. I'm going to be using a little bit of my phthalo blue. You want to use a smaller brush for this part of it. Um, what I often will do 
is I'll mix my colors with a larger brush. Sometimes I'll use a paint palette. I mean, a, a uh, gosh, I just drew uh, a palette knife to mix my colors. But here we go, just mixing in a blue. Let me grab a little bit more white. So watch, folks. Here's the original paint that I used for the background because I want to preserve some of this for when I paint the bottom edge. I just take my little spritzer bottle here, my, my mister, spray that a few times, and that'll help keep that from drying. I'm not using my wet palette today. Normally, the wet palette would do that for me. It would keep, preserve my paint nice and dry. I mean, <laughs> nice and wet, not dry. We don't want to dry, but uh, today we're using the, the little spritzer. So once I get the color that I want, I just kind of want a generally, you know, a darker blue than my background, right? If it's a, if it's too light, you're not going to see it against the background unless we go really light. But there's about the color that I want. Now I'll take a little bit of water. I dip my brush in the water just a little bit, bring some of that over. And here we go. Now I can outline my birds first and then paint and to outline, I would use a smaller brush or I can come in here with a big brush, get nice and close to my edge, but not quite. I don't want to accidentally start going over my lines. It's really easy to start creating, start getting, um, start making them larger if I'm not careful. So I'll come close to my edge and then in just a little bit, I'll be switching and grabbing a different brush to outline everything. If you're newer to painting, I mean, I could, if I'm, if I'm kind of feeling, if I feel like uh, walking on the wild side, I'll use this big brush for this whole thing. <clears throat> but you could easily go past your lines and that can be, again, it can be kind of uh, frustrating to fix. So, so I'll do this. I'll grab a smaller brush, again, a little flat brush. This is my little, um, this is about a quarter inch brush. This is a number three or number, yeah, about a number three flat. Okay. Now, Long lost the numbers on this, so I'm just giving you an about. There is no, I mean, even though there's a general kind of standard sizing to brushes, you will often find that manufacturers, they'll vary. A number five flat from one manufacturer will be a different, a little bit or sometimes a lot larger size than another manufacturer that labels their brush the same size. But in general, they are they are close. Okay, so again, just coming right up to my, trying to go over my chalk lines as much as I can with that, without going too far out, because again, you'll start making your birds really big, really quickly. So just uh, come right up to the line, paint right over it. If you have a little bit peeking out, if you use chalk, that's okay. We can always wipe that off at the very end. Once everything's dry, we just take a little wet cloth and or towel and lightly rub right over the top and that will remove those little chalk lines that are left over okay now there's my um there's the paint for my birds i can take a little bit of white now i'm going to create a lighter version of my blue and just uh and if you're using red whatever color you're using just add some white to it lighten it up a little leave it a little streaky and now what you can do is this right on the feathers just where the feathers would be. A little bit of a highlight. Depends on how fancy you want to get with your birds. If you want to give them a lot of detail, you can. I have um, last year for one of our painting sessions, we did some cardinals. I'll show you guys in just a second. We have a lot of detail. I teach you. It really depends. Some of, some of the paintings that we do are a little simpler, a little easier to follow along with. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to cover this here in just a moment, just for a moment. Last year, we did this lovebird pair. I think we did this in February. Look at the detail on these. We, we went through, drew everything, and painted over everything. So if you wanted that kind of level of detail on your birds, absolutely, you can do that. Or you can make them a little simpler to do, or a little, little more basic, like those right there. Okay? Now, we can always come back and add more paint to these birds later on, okay? Right now, this first layer of paint, I can see a little bit of the branch coming through. Uh, acrylic paint, ten, paint, paint tends to be uh, a little bit on the transparent side, so that's pretty common. We'll come back and add a second layer of paint over that, and that should clear that up. All right, so let me take a look at your comments, questions, et cetera, and then we move on. 
Yeah, those were a lot of fun to do, Michelle. Those Cardinals were awesome. Suzanne Fox says, thank you, Jesse. Enjoyed my time with you. Just got lucky and found you. Uh, let's see. So just grab my crayons and colored along. Just what I needed. Awesome, Suzanne. Yep. You use whatever you've got. If you got crayons, colored pencils, watercolors, whatever it is that you've got, bring what you've got and let's have some fun. Laverne says, great time. Awesome, Laverne. Sabine says, awesome time. Fantastic. Sarah Anderson says, at home, paint night with my boyfriend. First time back in a while. He's using his iPad, having a blast. Awesome, awesome. Yep, painting on an iPad. I've only done that a little bit, but I've seen some of those some amazing, amazing paintings done on iPads. If I ever have time, I say that all the time. I want to, I want to do everything with art. At some point in my life, or in other lives perhaps, I'll be doing sculpting and uh, woodworking and all this other stuff. There's just so much to art that you can get involved with that, uh, you know, takes a, a few lifetimes to do it, to do it all. And probably not even a, a few lifetimes would be enough. All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and paint in the rest of our branches. Switching back to a smaller brush, I'm going to clean up the little um, number four flat bright. A bright is a type of flat brush, just a little skinny. Um, brush that I'm going to be using to make the rest of my branches. I'm going to take more of my earth brown here, mix in a little bit of yellow. Okay, just kind of, you know, again, create a little bit of a golden brown. It helps to add a little bit of water when you're painting skinny lines. So take your brush, dip it into your water cup. You just want to try to dip mainly the bristles, bring that paint over, or sorry, bring the water over, mix it into your paint. It makes it really easy or much easier to make skinny lines when you add water to the paint. It requires less pressure to get the paint to spread on the canvas. So if you want to make little tiny lines, little tiny lines, you just you add a little water to your paint and that will really, really help. Okay, so once we've got that, I'm going to go through here. And I'm going to follow along again, really skinny on the main branch. I'm going to bring that over I'm in the center part of my branches. I'll add the little tiny ones later. Okay, and these are branches, of course. So they're, you know, they're, they're angles. There's angles to them. Skinny, skinny. Kind of does that. We add a little thickness here in a little while. Okay, in just a moment. We don't need to make them anything but skinny at the moment. Come like that. Comes down, and you notice I don't necessarily. I'm not necessarily sticking right over my chalk. It's okay if I don't. You know, I'll try to keep my brushstroke right over it. But if I lose concentration a little bit and I don't quite follow the exact same path as my chalk, that's okay. That we can take that chalk off later. So now I can start adding the little one thing I like to say about painting is that there are a bunch of different ways to paint. Different processes, different approaches will get you to, this, to really similar results. Same with your tools, your brushes. Just because I'm using a number four flat, bright brush, doesn't mean that that's what you have to use. You can use a different brush. A round brush, for example, will get you a similar you know, skinny lines. You can use a filbert. You can use an angular brush. Um, the trick is to, to gain enough experience where you start making your own choices. You start finding what you like best and going with that. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just making making these a little thicker right here and there. Uh, generally, the closer you are to the trunk or the closer you are to where the branch uh, branches off from the, from, the, from the main branch, it's a little bit thicker. So for example, here it's skinny, but as I get down here, I can make it a little bit thicker. Okay, so you can start with a thicker base and it slowly gets a little skinnier as it gets out towards where the two branches meet. But work it slowly, don't go too fast. Otherwise, you know, it may not turn out the way you want it to. Take your time with it. Especially if you're newer with it. Yeah, painting is something that requires some patience. If, you, um, if you're not a patient person and you want good results, painting's gonna force you to be a little patient. If you rush through it, 
And I've had some people tell me, hey, Jazzy, could you speed it up? You're going too, <laughs> too slow. Um, you know, if you rush through it, you're more than likely not going to get nice results. Usually. Right. Depends on your experience, of course, and, and your own pace. Everybody has a little bit of a different pace. But as I'm going through, I take a step back, look again at my painting, and then decide, okay, I need to make this one a little, a little thicker, maybe a little thicker there. We are moving along nicely on the time. We're going to start adding the leaves and the hearts and everything else here in just a little bit. Okay. Once you've got this, Oh, wait, I forgot this one over here. And the one down at the bottom. Sometimes I get to talking a little too much and I'll forget something. And then somebody in the comments will remind me. <laughs> hey, Jesse, are you going to do this part? Are you going to do that? You forgot this. And I'll go, oh, yeah, sometimes I'm saying bye to everybody. Say, okay, guys, we're all done. You know, thank you for joining in today, blah, blah, blah. I'm going through my, you know, my goodbyes. And somebody says, Jesse, wait, are you going to, you know, are you going to add that or are you going to add this? So pretty common. All right. Okay. Cool. Again, take a little step back. Look at your overall work. <clears throat> I'm going to add a few little ones here. Now, once we add the leaves and the, Hearts and everything else. You can always add more little branches wherever you feel like you need to add some. So I'm just going through and Okay, and then we have a little tiny one right here. Who knows, maybe you have one over there, maybe you got another branch over there. All up to you. Okay, good progress. Let me look down the comments, see where you guys are. <clears throat> thank you, Stephanie Joe. Thank you, thank you. Awesome, Elisa. Hey, Elisa, you're going to have to share that picture with the group, okay, with uh, with finding your brushstroke. Please share that. Even though, you know, we're, we're doing drawing and painting in there, you guys know I like to see what you guys uh, create. Awesome, Elisa. Yes, yeah, so share your paper crafting. Share it. Share it. I like it. Art is art. Kathy says, my first time back in a long time. Thank you for teaching and make it so easy. Uh, my pleasure, Kathy. Thank you so much. Glad you're back into it. There's so much... Uh, so many benefits, therapeutic benefits to art, even if you're not necessarily trying to sell your art or, you know, become a professional, et cetera, et cetera. There is so much to be gained from creating art, any type of art, something about working with your hands and your brain, just kind of focusing on one thing, whether it's sculpting, watercolor, drawing, um, woodworking, metalworking, whatever it is, it's, it's you know, it's very therapeutic. Looking at the comments, folks. Elise says, I made too many branches, LOL. That's okay, Elise. Don't stress too much. Don't stress about it. You know, it, it is what it is. If you ended up with too many, that's okay. Uh, love doing that one. What color blue did you use again? Finish the tree. So I used for my uh, my, my birds, I simply used some of my, <coughs> excuse me, some of my phthalo blue. Okay, phthalo blue mixed in with a little bit of white. Okay. But pretty much whatever blue you got will be just fine. Okay, so let's start adding our hearts. We have more detail at sh the shadows and the highlights and the big heart in the tree. We're going to be adding our hearts now. Again, it's up to you if you want to draw these first. I'm not going to draw them with chalk. I'm going to get right into drawing these with paint. Now, it would help to have a little round brush, kind of like this pointy thing. This is called a round brush. This is a number three round. I've got a number zero round. Basically, even though it, it, it's round like this from the top, but pointy from if you look at it from the side. These are excellent to draw with. I'm going to grab some red, and I'm going to bring it over to one of my plates. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take some water. I'm going to dip my brush in the water. 
bring a few drops of water over. So I'm just dip, taking my brush, dipping it, dipping it into my cup, and I bring it on over. What that does, again, especially because we're going to make making skinny, small skinny lines, which is I'm going to be making the outlines of the heart. I'm going to draw them first. It helps to add some water to your paint. Some acrylic paint is really thick. Some is a little, a little bit more flowy, but it, almost every acrylic paint that I've ever worked with when I'm making skinny lines, I add a little water to it, and it helps a lot. And the other thing with these round brushes, I can spin the brush like this, it makes it nice and skinny. Now I can concentrate on making skinny lines. We'll start over here. Maybe we've got a little heart. I take my pinky, put it up against my canvas, and then I draw, let's see, one side of a heart first, and I come over to the other side. You need to practice on a on a spread on a separate piece of paper. Please do so. I'll color I'll color it in just a little bit. I'm going to draw all my little hearts first. Maybe I've got one right here. Your little hearts don't have to go straight up. They can be a little bit angled. I'm going to try to do this next one where I'm not blocking my drawing hand. Okay. So let's say for example I've got one. I'll put one right here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to see if I can do this without blocking you guys. So I'm sure you guys all know how to draw a heart, but just in case, I draw one side first. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. And then I'm missing a branch. I can always add that later. Okay. Let's move along. Right up on top, another little heart. In this case, I'm taking my non-drawing hand. I put it right on my canvas. Take my drawing hand or painting hand, and I can... Just put it right here and help stabilize my hand. Okay. Let's continue right over here. Okay. Oh, and I don't have a little branch over here. I'm going to add it really fast. I like that little branch on the inside. Got a little happy one right there hanging out. I won't do that branch yet. I'm going to mix it. I'm going to grab the red and brush it across if I, I mean, I can accidentally grab some of that red. I don't want to do that right now. So there we go. Here's another heart. Okay. There you got a little guy right here. I am looking forward to seeing what you guys all create. So please don't be shy. When I'm all done here today, when we're done with the session, I'm going to record a quick video and say, hey, guys, for those of you that painted with me today, please post your pictures below. And then in the comments, you'll just start, you can share your, uh, your paintings so that everybody can kind of scroll through and see them. If you're done today, if you're done tomorrow, whenever it is that you finish your painting, that's when you, you, know, you can share it. But if you finish today and you want to share, Please do so. Again, it's just a lot of fun to see what everybody else creates. It'll be right here on the Painting with Jesse page that you guys can do that. Okay? So now that I've got my hearts all painted in or outlined in, I can go ahead and just take a, one of my small flat brushes. Now, if you have a filbert brush, a filbert brush looks like this. It has a rounded head. It's kind of like a, the flat brush, but it's rounded. These are good for painting in curved edges. Okay, if you don't have one, it's okay. You can use a a flat brush. Filberts tend to make it just a little bit easier to do so. And you're painting on the inside and then uh, make sure you're using the appropriate size brush. If you go too big, you'll feel it right, right away if you're having a hard time staying on the inside of your parts. Now for this part, you don't have to, if, as long as your paint is kind of fluid, you don't need to um, add water to your mixture. Because I'm not making skinny lines, I'm just going through and painting on the inside. With the paint that I'm using, it's not super important that I use water with it. Now 
again, folks, I'm going to be uh, painting with you guys here on the Painting with Jesse page. I'm going to try to be here at least once a month. You know, I love painting with, with, the, with the page. It's what got me started with the online stuff. So, um, you know, I, I plan on making it a regular thing in 2022. Uh, 2021, I was painting a lot at the beginning of the year. 2020, I, did, I think in 2020, I probably did close to 100 sessions, something like that. But um, towards the end of 2021, or the middle of 2021, I started slowing things down because I opened up a membership and started to kind of concentrate on that. But um, I'm going to try to be a little more consistent with the painting with Jesse Page. And at least once a month, come on here and do a nice little painting like this one. So again, if you guys want to keep on top of that and stay informed whenever I'm going live, make sure you sign up to the Painting with Jesse email list. Should be a link in the description of the video. If not, you can always message me directly. I'll post. I'll post. I'll post about it when we, uh... hola Liliana, how's it going? Let's see, okay, okay, good. Remember, you can always paint this later. Jennifer, so if you if you missed the video, if you, you can always back this one up now. It's easy to back it, you can just back it up and start right from the beginning. But if you don't have time to paint right now, or if you're, you know, you have to take off, you're painting and you have to leave, on the main painting with Jesse Page at the top, at the very top, there's a bunch of tabs. You'll see videos, you'll see live, you'll see a few different options. You click on live. You also click on videos, but this on live, you'll see this video at the very top. Click click there and you'll watch this. Okay? Absolutely, you can do this, Carolyn. Absolutely. So, uh, so the name of my membership is called Finding Your Brushstroke. This is to Kathy. It's called Finding Your Brushstroke. It's here on Facebook. It's a private group. Um, I currently have about 120 members, uh, and we paint, we draw and paint on a monthly basis. We usually have about seven events during the month, seven different sessions. Some of them involve just drawing. Uh, we usually have a couple of technique classes where we'll focus on something like blending or we, we're focusing on making clouds. This, this month, January, we did, we worked on a lot on making trees. We worked on making uh, winter trees, and I'll show you guys just kind of quickly using fan brushes and um, fan brushes and flat brushes. We kind of went through on how to make winter trees. Okay, and of course, that's just different steps involved in the process that I'm outlining there. But uh, so it just depends. Each each month we kind of tackle something different with a technique Tuesday. They're called technique Tuesdays right now. But what we do is things like. Where's the painting? So this was a painting challenge that we did uh, with this one here. We just finished this. We did this over three sessions. There's other painting events that we do during the month, but this was the big one for the month. Uh, and what we're doing with this one is in a few months time, we're going to redo this one. And the idea is that everyone's going to be able to see a nice difference in their, uh, in their ability. The more they paint, the more we go through lessons. My membership doors are closed right now. Won't be open again until sometime in the spring. If you're a part of the Painting with Jesse email list, I will send that information out with plenty of time. Um, you know, and uh, but anyway, we have a beautiful community of people in there. I am just super thankful and happy to have, like I said, we're close to 120 people that are in there. Um, just we do a lot of, we support each other. It's just an awesome, awesome group. Lots of really, really nice people in there. <clears throat> I got really lucky. And, um, you know, if you are interested, be part of the be a part of the Painting with Jesse email list and you'll get that information. OK, we're going to get into making some leaves now. Oh, our little our big heart. We can't forget that big heart. Sorry, folks. I know sometimes I get I go off on a little tangent. I, um, you know, I love the interaction part with all of you. So I know some of you guys are in a hurry and are going, oh, my gosh, this guy talks a lot. It's just my style. Um, but uh, again, you know, if you if you run out of time and you need to come back and watch this later, you'll find the video under the uh, live tab at the top of the painting with Jesse page. But anyhow, if you are interested in that membership, uh, when it comes time for me to open the doors again, and again, it probably will not be until spring, maybe right before summer. I, I can't imagine waiting past May to open the doors again. Um, but I've got a lot of stuff that I've got to take care of. I just, the wife and I just had a baby on Christmas day. 
we had a little girl on Christmas Day. At, uh, the official her official birth time is 12:25 p.m. on 12:25. So of course, you know that's it's a baby. A lot of sleepless nights and keeping us really busy and stuff. It's been glorious and beautiful and everything, but it takes a lot of time, you know, um, for obvious reasons, right? Many, I'm, I'm sure most of us on here have kids, but uh, so uh, because of that and because of all the other stuff that I got going on, especially focusing in on the membership, on my members and on the membership, I won't be opening the doors up until springtime. But if you are interested, please be a part of the Painting with Jesse email list and you'll get information as that comes along okay but all right there's my big heart on my tree perhaps some of you are going to be putting in initials in there etc etc again maybe some of you're going to be having more birds what i would do if you are going to put more birds in yours i would go ahead and start adding them now before you put in your leaves once you put in your leaves you kind of limit your your space um, you'd want to put in your birds first but we're going to get into those um those different leaves i'm going to grab a small flat brush to start them off with, I'm going to be using that number four flat bright brush or bright flat brush. I'm going to grab some green. My, my uh, leaves are greens and yellows and pinks, but I'm going to start with some green. So my brush looks like this. I'm going to just grab some basic, basic green. And, and I'm just going to start drawing in some, some leaves. Now, the leaves don't have to be attached right to a branch. They can be floating a little bit off like that one is, okay? But wherever you have one of these little, these little branches kind of sticking off, you can add a little leaf to it. Now, again, I'm using some greens and some yellows, so I'm just gonna make a few little green ones. And all I'm doing is I do one side of the leaf and then the other side, okay? Like that, okay? Some are smaller, some are bigger. I can make a little thing like that, okay? Um, again, they don't have to be attached to a branch. They can just kind of just be floating a little bit off to the side, or you can always put in a leaf and then attach a branch to it if, if it doesn't look right to you. So, and then I got some floating, some of them that are kind of just falling off the leaf, uh, off the, uh, the branch. Okay, so I'll make a few green ones, and then I'm going to turn around and make, I'm going to take some yellow and mix it in with some green, make a, make a, a lighter color of this and then here we go some light ones but I uh, I can't emphasize enough how much I love the people in my group just so many amazing and awesome people a lot of them have become uh, like family to me you know um, not everybody is super, super involved. You know, people get involved with what they can. Everybody's schedules are a little different. Some people can paint, you know, once a week. Some people can paint three times a week. Uh, some people can paint once a month. The membership is meant to kind of um, fit in with all types of schedules. Everything, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. I'm uh, having a little choke attack. Everything that we do in the group is meant to improve on your skills, but that also comes from experience and time. Um, just doing it, going through the process of painting, um, you know, the more you do it, the better you become. But there are other benefits to painting. You know, there's a, lot, a very big therapeutic aspect to, to art. And so we focus on that as well. Those are big focuses within the group and just supporting each other. Some people want to paint just to paint. Some people want to paint because eventually they want to sell their art. Some people paint because they, they like gifting art to people, to others. So it really depends. We're just a big group of uh, people with a bunch of different uh, goals around art. Main thing is, though, is enjoying, having fun, and supporting each other. Now I'm taking a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow. Okay, just kind of create a kind of an in-between, almost like a, a really light golden brown. And then I'm going to pick a few spots to create some of these kind of darker leaves. And again, I'm just using a basic flat brush. A filbert would be good to use uh, for this as well if you have a filbert, a smaller rounded edged filbert. This would be fantastic. Oh, also within the membership, last thing folks, I don't want to sit here and 
make this a commercial about the membership. Um, we do adults and children's paintings, and everybody gets to get involved with whatever they want. Lots of our adults like to do the kids stuff. I'm a big kid at heart, and um, it's enjoyable to do a little bit of both. So, all right, a little bit of pink. Let me grab some pink now, just basic pink. I'm going to make a few pink leaves. Okay, got a little bit of red in there by accident. That's all right. That still works. All right, so a few little pink ones. Maybe there. Have fun with this, folks. Have fun with this. Again, yours does not have to look just like mine. It can be very different, and it's all good. Okay? All right. I'm liking this. This is looking good. Uh, what we're going to do next is add some of the detail to the tree, some of the dark areas, the shadow side, shadow part, and then some, some of the highlights. We're going to add one more layer of paint on our birds, and then I think we're pretty much good to go and start adding some glitter for those of you that are going to be adding that. Okay? So, all right, let me take a look at your comments and your questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Clarine. Thank you so much. Yes, it's been it's been it's been beautiful. And Victoria, yep. Again, folks, this you'll be able to play this um, whenever you want. It's going to be available for at least a week um, here on the Painting with Jesse page. Just go to the live tap on top, click on that. You'll be able to watch the video whenever you want. But even right now, you can start this video right over. You start right from the beginning and um, you know start painting from from the beginning of this. Okay whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. <clears throat> Twyla, you got it. Okay. If you guys are ready to move on to the next step, and I know I might have moved on, moved a little quickly, give me a bunch of just hearts. Let's heart it up. Hit that little heart emoji, and we'll get moving. Thank you, Gina. Thank you so much. You got it. My pleasure. Thank you for joining in today. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope you're doing awesome, Gloria. Yes, Elisa, yep. We, it's just an amazing group, right? Love it, love it. Good, Robert. Okay. Oh, Nancy. Okay, fantastic, Nancy. Happy to hear. All right, here we go. See a bunch of hearts, which means we're ready to go. Okay, what we're going to do now then is we're going to start adding some of the little highlights that you see up on top and then the little shadows on the bottom. And we can start with either one. I'm going to start with the shadow part. Um, and what we can do is, again, taking one of the small brushes, any one of our smaller brushes. Let's see, I'm going to grab, I'll use my, my half-inch flat brush here. Okay, I've got this dark brown right here. I can use this to offset down in here. I can also add a little bit of black to, to my brown to make it a bit darker. And I'm just going to take a little bit of it. That is a color that I don't know if I listed, but that's okay. If you got some, if you don't have uh, black, but you've got some dark brown, you can just use that. If you've got a little bit of black, take a little bit of black and mix it in. I'm just going to take a little bit of it. Again, I didn't list this at the beginning. I do apologize about that, but uh, we don't need a lot. I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of it to create a darker brown. Okay, just a tiny, tiny bit of it. And I'm going to go and just add a little bit on the bottom part of our branches. Okay, it goes across. And we're gonna go like this. And not every single, now I can also go in here and add a second layer of paint to some of my browns. They're a little bit, they're a little bit see-through, transparent. And I can always add a little bit in it later, especially to the big parts of the tree, like the big parts of the um, branches. So again, again, towards on the bottom edge of our branches, we got some shadowing. So just pick a few little spots. Okay, kind of like that. And then what I'll do once I've got that, Using the same uh, brush, I'm just going to kind of uh, 
And granted, this is a little darker than what's on my original tree. That's okay. Still going to work. Just making little tiny lines here. We're almost done, folks. We're getting there. We're getting towards the end. I just noticed I got a little blue, bit of blue edge right there. That was by accident. I didn't even notice that. But that still works. My tree gets narrow as it get, uh, gets towards the, you know, closer to the top. It's a little skinnier. So a few little streaky lines in here. Okay, and then maybe up here a few to break up some of the almost uh it's almost like two it's a little flat up here so i'm using these lines to break some of that up on top okay now a little bit of white let me grab some of my white okay just a touch of my white a little bit of the yellow, mixing that in with some of the brown. Remember white, as I mentioned earlier, white tends to make paint. Of course, it's going to make it lighter, right? It's going to lighten things up, but it also makes it a little bit chalky. And that's okay. It just depends on what you're looking for. Just going through here. Some more outlines around my heart. Now I'm probably using too big of a brush for this, so let me switch. The bigger the brush, or the smaller the brush, the more control you've got. So I'm just switching over to my little four flat bright brush. I'm gonna grab some of the same color. Now I can make little skinnier lines. I'll go over that. I'll show you guys what that glitter looks like again for those of you that maybe don't have it and are planning on picking it up later. You always pick it up. It's at Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Even Walmart carries glitter paint now. And basically, it's just glitter floating around in glue. You can add that anytime. You don't have to add it today. It's just a little layer of paint that we apply over, um, for example, the hearts. So when we're doing the highlights, you want them on the top parts of your branches. So for example, up here, right? So the sun, let's say the sun's up on top. You just touch little areas here and there. You don't have to cover the, not every part of your branch has to have this highlight in it. Let me see if I can give you a close up. Okay. So for example, like this, Just little touches here and there. I'm not trying to create a super, super fancy painting. So just a little semblance of a, of a highlight. If you imagine that your sun is up on top, right? You just have little tiny touches of highlights on the top side of the branches. So here, for example. Okay, then you add some here to the bottom one. I was trying to find, <clears throat> I went through my closet to look for a red shirt. And I didn't have a red shirt. I was like, what? I thought I had a red shirt. So I ended up with this. Kind of in between, almost like a pink. Actually, it is a pink, but I have a red apron for Valentine's Day. Very important to represent. We're doing a Valentine's painting. You need to have a Valentine's colored shirt, a Valentine's themed outfit. Even though it's not quite an outfit, you guys know what I mean. All right, let's look at the comments. We're almost to the finish line. What's happening, Jill? <laughs> How are you, Jill? Thank you for stopping by. <clears throat> Oh, no worries, Jill. You just moved, huh? Okay. Well, you already know how this works, Jill. Uh, you can watch the recorded session. It's going to be sitting in the, uh, you know, in the membership. So as a member, you have access to it anytime. 
but it will be available here on the Painting with Jesse page for at least a week. Awesome, Jamie. Glad you joined us today. Patricia Martini says, hi from Quebec, Canada. My daughter and I really enjoyed your lesson. Awesome, Patricia. Thank you to you and your daughter for joining in today. Happy that you enjoyed it. Okay. So before we do anything else, what I want to do is add another layer of paint to the birds. We're ready to talk about glitter right after that. If you wanted to, you could add more paint to your hearts. I'm going to be covering mine up with glitter, so there's really no need to go and add more paint there. Yes, my birds are going to have a layer of glitter on top of them, but they're a little bit too translucent where I can see some of the branch coming through the body. So I'm, I just want to make sure I cover that up. Okay, so back to the original mixture. In this case, um, I'm just going to, I just need a color that's close to the original that's on the birds now. When, I, when you heard me earlier talking about color matching, if you run out of, and you want to make sure you have enough paint to cover um, everything that you're doing at that moment so you don't have to stop part way through and remix your paint. Um, what I was talking about, it, whatever you're doing in that one layer, you want to match, you want to have enough paint to cover that entire um, step for the most part. Now, if you, you know, in this case, we're going to do another layer on top of this. As long as I have enough paint to do an entire second layer without running out, that's that's what's important. So I'm mixing my phthalo blue and a little bit of white. <laughs> Excuse me. Now this color that I'm making right now, oops, let me grab a little bit more. Uh, when I add this second layer, it's going to reduce and eliminate uh, the translucent nature of that paint. So I'm just going to come in here. And sometimes it requires more than one step, right? You can do um, two steps, three steps. It just depends on your paint type, how, how uh, thick your paint is, how much pigment is in it. Sometimes it does require a third layer, sometimes even a fourth layer to cover up, uh, clean up the transparent nature of acrylic paint so that you don't see that background color coming through. But it, it varies a little bit. So kind of up to you if on, this, on the second layer you still have some of that branch coming through, the branch color coming through like right there on the on the uh, wings, I could see it a bit. Then I would do another layer or third, fourth layer, just depends. Okay, now I'm taking a little bit of white, okay, making a lighter version of this. I'm gonna come in here and right over those wings. Okay, and then again, because I'm gonna be using some glitter. I'm going to be covering up, it's going to help cover up any, any translucency of the paint. So I don't necessarily need to go to a third or fourth layer, like I, like I was mentioning. Okay. All right. Now, always take a step back and you look at your painting from a distance. There are some differences between the two. I could come in here and add more highlights, more of the low lights, just to kind of make it look a little bit fuller, like I did there with the original. Um, Maybe I'll just really quickly add a few more. What I like to tell people is I don't always, let's say at the end of the session, you know, it, my painting is going to look done to me. I'm gonna, okay, it's done. But I don't necessarily officially call it done until I come back and take a second look. The next day, a couple of days later, I'll look at it again. When you look at your painting with fresh eyes, you're going to be better able to catch any areas that maybe you didn't see, whoops, let me grab a different brush, that you, some discrepancy or some area that you didn't add or something you need to change that maybe you didn't see, you know, during the first session. So always, you know, when, I, when, when I'm done, I will say, okay, I think I'm done. I'll walk away, come back the next day, come back, you know, a couple days later, I'll look at it again. And almost every time there's some little adjustment that I can make that will complete it. Okay, so kind of up to you. You can do just that. All right. I'm going to take my blow dryer. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and dry this up and we're going to get into that glitter and then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and erase my chalk lines and I'm going to paint the bottom of it and then we're going to call it a day.
Here we go. Oh, I got a little drippy. I have too much thick paint on that on that uh, leaf. Let me go ahead and correct that really quick. That's something that's easy to fix. I can just kind of take my brush, just make it a little bit bigger. No big deal. Okay, do we have any more of those? Nope, we're good. All right, here we go. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about glitter. Well, we have a little time. We've only been painting for about an hour and 40 minutes, which is fantastic. Uh, really good time. I, even though, even when, I, when, I, when we finish, for those of you who want to stick around for a little bit, I can answer questions and things like that after this, okay? But what I want to talk about right now, actually, let me look at your comments really quickly before I get into that glitter. Let's see what you guys have for me. So this, hi, Aunt, hi, Nancy. So this is a 16 by 20 inch canvas that I'm using. Okay. For those of you that, that uh, are planning on using the stencil, if you, so there's two parts to the stencil or traceable that I make available to you. The birds, if you print them out exactly as they are, just the birds one, there's a part with that that has the entire, the tree and everything else in it. But if you print out the part that has just the bird, they come out about this size as what you see, actually this, this size, these are a little bit bigger. They come out about like that, okay? Let's see. Hearts and leaves, huh, Penny? Ah, you're so so behind, Penny. What the heck? Speed it up, huh? <laughs> you know, I'm kidding, Penny. Everybody take everybody paints at a different pace, folks. Don't, don't stress out about that. Um, hi, Jennifer. Yes, how are you? It's been a minute since we painted with you. We missed this live. Just skipping by to say we all are thankful you record as well. So us that missed it can do it later. Love, love, love this. Can't wait for my eight-year-old to do this. You got it, Jennifer. Hope you enjoy it. Yep, absolutely. Come on back and paint when you're ready to go. Thank you, Dulce. Thank you so much for the stars. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Rachel says, thank you so much. My birthday girl had a blast and so did I. Awesome. Happy birthday to your birthday girl. Thank you both for hanging out with me today. Let's see. All right, let's see what else is happening here. All right, this was awesome. My seven-year-old was able to follow along. She's so happy with her final pick. She used crayons and markers this whole life, and follow along art has made her so happy. Let's see. Whoops, I need to get down to the bottom. Why is it stuck? So happy, nothing but smiles the whole time and even after. Thank you for being you and do what you do. Much love from Turlock. Ah, my pleasure. Those comments make my day. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining in. I really do appreciate each and every single one of you. Paul Evans says way behind, but it's coming out great for doing a free hand with a bad shoulder. I think my girlfriend will love it. She sure will. I'm sure she will. I am absolutely sure she will. All right, everyone. So final steps. Again, once I call this done, I'm going to be sticking around a little bit to answer any questions some of you may have about any of the process. So the glitter, as I mentioned earlier today, when we first started, <clears throat> there are different types of glitter that you can get that look like this. This is a brand from Deco Art. It's called Craft Twinkles. Basically what it is, is a bunch of glitter floating around in glue. They come in different bottles and types. Some of it you can pick up at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, pretty much any art store. I believe places like Joann's have these. <clears throat> okay, but basically all this is, is glitter floating in glue. And what you do is you want to apply this stuff. And I'm sure some of you, or most of you, or a lot of you probably already have experience with this. But I want to walk through the steps really quickly for those of you that do not. What you want to do is when you, <coughs> excuse me, when you apply it, you're applying this to areas that are already dry. 
If you add this stuff to areas that are wet, the glitter will mix in with the paint and it will get a little bit dull. It won't be quite as nice. So I'm putting on, I'm just putting on a few different colors, blue, pearl. Um, give me a second, folks. Let me grab, I need a, this is really thick. This is a really thick glitter. So I need to grab a brush to pull it out of the cup and I'll show I mean the bottle. I'll show you what this looks like in a second. So I really, really appreciate everybody on here. It's been, uh, it's been the last live event that I did with the painting with Jesse Page was the Santa piece uh, last month. We did a really cool Santa. And I had it up on the wall behind me until earlier this week. I removed it. I think I put it. I have stacks of paintings in my studio. I have a small studio and it gets filled up kind of quickly. But I do believe I stacked it over there. If there's time, I'll see if I can show it to you guys. But um uh, we had a really nice turnout today, so lovely, lovely. It's been an amazing time with all of you. Uh, here's my glitter uh, plate. And again, all it is is glitter floating around in glue. I'm going to start with my bird. Actually, no, my birds are still a little bit wet, so let, let, let those dry a little bit. You want to take a brush? Any brush will do as long as it's clean, free of paint. I'm using one of these filbert brushes since it's clean. All I'm going to do is come over and paint this right over I, I usually will stick with red, for example, like colors over like, like colored glitters over like colored paint, but you don't have to do that. You can kind of experiment a little bit and mix and match a little. Uh, for example, uh, you know, if I don't have pink glitter, I can use red over pink. And I do have pink glitter in my studio. I'm just not going to use it today. No big deal. But um, for example, gold will go over yellow. The pearl color that you see on my plate, that's pretty cool. I think I call it crystal. Um, it goes, it can go on pretty much anything. You can go over uh, the blues or the reds. It's a really versatile color. Okay. So, so there's the red. I just put it over some of the hearts. Okay. And then I'm going to take um, a little bit of the, the uh, let's see, what should I, I'm going to go with the gold. I'm going to use this to go over. I can put this on my yellow leaves. I can put this on the green ones. I do have some green uh, glitter as well. I just didn't put it out. I'll grab it here in just a second. So and I'm just I'm just dabbing it right over everything. So look at look at that. I know it's kind of hard to see depending on the light or it shimmers, but it makes a really nice difference. It's a really nice embellishment, okay? And uh, glitter can also be used to cover up in areas that maybe you don't necessarily like. If there's something, some part of it, maybe a color that you don't quite like or, or something that's, you know, you want to maybe um, cover up. You just take a little glitter, put it right over the top of it, and you're good to go, okay? And you don't have to put glitter on everything. Pick a few spots to add glitter to. Um, you know, something you want to draw your attention, your eyes to, or the viewer's eyes to. Okay, now I've got this kind of a forest green I'm going to be using also. As I'm going across and adding this glitter, my birds are still drying. I may have to take my blue dryer to them one more time. We'll see. Okay, again, a little bit of green here, there. You can also layer your glitter. If you let this dry a bit and you want it to be more glittery, well, you just come back over it again. You can make, you can really make something super, super glittery by layering, <laughs> layering it. I have this little remaining cough. I had, I actually had COVID about two and a half weeks ago. Um, it wasn't anything serious. Well, minor, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm vaxxed, fully vaxxed, and uh, even had my booster shot. It still got me. I think probably the sleepless nights with the new baby just kind of run down my immune system a bit. Um, luckily, knock on wood, the baby and everybody else was fine. Um, but there were mild symptoms, and I didn't detect them at first. I thought it was most, mostly fatigue from the lack of sleep. 
but I did develop a mild cough and I've still got that a little tiny bit. But anyhow, if you hear me coughing, that's what that's what that is. Okay, let's take a look before we add glitter to the birds. Look how cool that is. I could, I'm going to take, actually, you know what? I'm going to take really quickly. I'm going to take some gold and put it on the tree. Well, let's see. Hold on a sec. Let me see if I can show you on the original. On the original, I'm not going to take it off the, the, the canvas or the easel. I don't want to drop stuff. Um, I've got some gold on it. You can see it kind of shimmering. If you have some gold, like the fine gold or the thicker gold that I applied to the leaves, that makes a good finisher for, uh, for your tree. Okay, so... You have that? <clears throat> you can add that there. Let me take my blow dryer one more time to the birds, and then we're going to add some glitter here. Sign our piece. I'll maybe paint the bottom edge of the painting, and we're good to go. Okay, that should do it. Yeah, Jill, um, definitely, you know, it was just, again, the, the symptoms, my symptoms were mild, luckily. Um, but this cough, more than anything, is just, it's annoying. I have tested a couple of times since, and I've tested negative, and it's been a quarantined and isolated. I actually spent the night at a hotel. Once I found, when, once I found out I had it, I spent the night at a hotel for a couple of nights. Uh, stayed away from from the house. Didn't want to get my, you know, my little girl sick. So, uh, yeah. And then I quarantined for another five days. It's followed basically with the you know, CDC guidelines around all that. So, but yeah, I hear you know some of the uh, symptoms can linger, right? So. That's my, uh, that's my, my symptom that's lingering right now is that, this cough. Okay, so there we go, a little blue glitter. Okay, this pretty blue glitter, I'm just putting right over my bluebirds, little lovebirds. And if I wanted to, I could maybe take some of the pearl color and add it to the wings. It's going to mix in a little bit with my, uh, with my blue glitter. That's all right. Don't forget, folks, please, please, please uh, share your finished masterpieces with my with the painting with Jesse Page. As soon as I'm done here, I'm posting a short video saying, hey, guys, thank you for joining me today. Share your video, share your pictures right here. <laughs> wow. Looks like my I'm getting a little bit of a cough attack here toward the end of the session. But yeah, I really would love to see your paintings. And I think everyone will appreciate you sharing. Um, it's always fun, like I mentioned, to see what everybody else produces. But all right, what do we got? Let's take a look. Okay, last thing we want to do, I'm not going to bother about the bottom here. I'll do that off camera. That's not important. I would flip it on its head, paint, paint it, let it dry for a little bit. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take a moment to sign my piece. Very important. If you want other people to know who made your masterpiece, you want to sign it. I signed the original in blue, and I think I'm going to do, I'll do the new one in red. Why not? It is Valentine's Day. I think it's appropriate. Actually, I'm going to mix red and some pink. How's that? A little water because I'm going to make skinny lines, right? I'm using a small round brush. And I probably probably should be using a smaller round brush than this one, but we'll see how this goes. I'm going to just have to sign it a little bit bigger. Just using my last name here. There we go. Ta-da. Ta-da. All right, everyone. Like I said, I'm going to be hanging out. <laughs> wow. I'm, I don't know what's happening when I'm picking, my cough is picking up here. I think probably because I've been talking a lot. But anyhow, I'm going to hang out for five minutes or so to answer any questions, comments, etc. Please put them down below before I get into your questions and stuff. 
once again, I want to thank each and every one of you that joined me today. I absolutely appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, again, if you want to stay up to date with the stuff on the painting with Jesse Page, I am going to be coming on here regularly, once a month at least. Sometimes it'll be complete paintings like this. Sometimes it'll be maybe uh, something around technique, etc. But you want to sign up to the painting with Jesse email list. And I got some paint on my pretty Valentine's pink shirt. Sorry, we'll see if I can get that off later. Um, you want to sign up to that painting with Jesse email list. It's in the description of this video. If it's not there, you can message me directly here on Facebook. I'll send you the link to that. But the event page, the event page for this session has all of the details uh, as far as any of that's concerned. Again, I don't spam you. I only send you information around what's coming on the calendar. Um, I love to have as many people on as possible. I love sharing art. I think art is super therapeutic and important um, to do. Even again, if your only goal is to just create art just for, for you know, the, the creation of art's sake, it is very, very therapeutic for you. Um, so I like to share my love of it with everyone. And uh, the more people that jump on, the merrier. Also, if you are interested in jumping on or finding details out about the membership, my private membership here on Facebook, I also email information out from time to time to the Painting with Jesse email list. But I, again, I don't spam you. I don't blast you. So up to you. If you'd like to join that, please do so. Okay. All right, everyone. Oh, last thing with your brushes. If you're new for, to painting, hopefully you've been doing this. Your brushes as you're using them, leaving them in water. Um, you want to clean them up. A little bit of soap. Take them to your sink. You know, rinse. Use your rinse cup. Remove, you know, remove all the extra paint. Uh, use a little bit of soap. A uh, little dish soap is fine. Clean them up. Once you clean them, you want to reshape them. You want to do this to them. Once they're all clean, put them back into shape while they're still wet. And then you let them dry. Don't let them dry sitting in a cup with the weight of the brush pushing down on the bristles. That will quickly damage them. You want to lay them flat on their side. Some people prefer to do them up like this. I normally will put them on a table. Uh, over, so paper towel on the surface, and these are sitting on top like this. They dry, and then I put them away. You don't put them face down because it will damage those bristles. Okay? But all right. What do you guys got for me? <clears throat> oh, absolutely, Elise. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, if you, whenever you're following along with me, um, <laughs> if you're in the, especially in the membership, in the membership, I've got a whole bunch of different beautiful artwork, or beautiful options of artwork, uh, kids and adult stuff. If you're a part of the membership, you can sell your art that you create with me. As long as you're not mass producing it, I'm, I'm you know, you're, you're um, you can also, uh, for those of you that have um, creative businesses, if you, for example, you know, do paint parties and stuff like that as part of the membership, you can use those designs in there to teach others. Okay. So Carolyn House, Carolyn House Evans, my pleasure. Thank you for joining. Let me see. I'm going to go up the list really quickly. All right, folks, if you have any questions of anything, please let me know. <laughs> Get paint off shirt. You, yes, I, I sure will. We'll try. What's happening, Sue? Hey, Sue. Thank you for stopping by. Awesome, Barbara. Yep. Come on back and paint it when you're ready. Sounds good, Penny. Thank you for joining in again, folks. If I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at the laptop, checking out your questions. You got it, Liliana. Thank you for joining today. Michael, you got it. Thank you. Thank you for joining in. My, my, uh, my thanks to you, and I appreciate the kind words. Uh, Isela, yes, so I have an art membership, a private art membership group here in Facebook. It's called Finding Your Brushstroke. If you're interested in getting more information on that, uh, you can message me or just join the email list. You can also back up the video. I talked a little, little bit about it uh, during the middle part of this, but I'd be more than happy to email you information about it. The doors are currently closed to new members. I won't be opening it, uh, open those, opening those doors of, uh, until springtime sometime. I don't have a date on that yet. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, so I'm taking a little time before I do that. 
Okay, so, but yes, if you are interested, I will email that information out as the date, as I have a date, that's that's still quite a bit of a ways off. I'm not, I, it's only kind of a little bit in the back of my mind, but when that time comes, I do email the followers of the Painting with Jesse email list. Um, and then what I do is I, you can sign up to the email list just for the private membership if you become interested in that, okay? So, all right, let's see what time we got. Um, thank you, Gloria. Yep, thank you for joining in today. I really do appreciate you coming over. Uh, please don't forget to share your painting, okay? Uh, you all, you're an awesome artist. I'd love to see your stuff, so please make sure you share it. Let's see, MBOB says, thank you. I enjoyed painting with you, painting with Jesse. My pleasure. Thank you for joining in. Let's see, what else do we got? Karen McNeve. McNeevy or McNeve says, love this. Good, Karen. Hot tea and honey for cough. Good for sinus and cough. Absolutely. I will be jumping on that later today. People tell me all, tell me that all the time and every once in a while I do it and it clears everything up. And I'm like, oh, this works. And then I forget about it. All right, everyone. Oh, somebody's anniversary. Justine. Oh, Justine. I am slow as a turtle. We'll have to rewatch a few times to get it finished. Thank you so much. Can't wait to gift to my hubby for our 31st anniversary, February 16th. Justine, you and I talked a little bit over Messenger, right, about supplies and things like that. Thank you so, so much for joining. I wasn't sure that you were on here until I just saw your comment. So thank you for joining today. I really appreciate you having come on. I'm sure you're going to be, you know, finishing up this project long before the 16th. Um, but, you know, Make sure you share when you do finish, and I hope your hubby loves it. I'm sure he will. And congratulations on your anniversary. Karen says, relaxing and fun. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. Samantha Noel says, great. Myself and eight-year-old daughter recovering from COVID. We loved it. Awesome, Samantha. Thank you to you and your daughter. Lisette from Puerto Rico. How's it going? You made it. Awesome. Remember, you could... Uh, Back the video up if you're starting right now. You can back it right up to the beginning. Elizabeth Koning says, this was a lot of fun. Fantastic. All right, everyone. I think, ah, oh, Diana. Thank you, Diana. You didn't have to. You're part of the membership. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you're part of the membership, you know, you guys are already giving me lots of love in there and stuff. So, you know, I do appreciate the stars. Thank you so much. You are an artist, Liz. Liz covers... Let's cover. <laughs> Fools says, thank you. I feel like an artist. You are an artist, Liz. If you feel like an artist, you are an artist. Okay. Whether you're a brand new beginner or you've been painting a while, you are an artist. If you feel it, you're an artist. Okay. Paula says, I am new. Fantastic, Paula. Let's see. What else do we got? Sally Lemieux Le uh, Lambert says, thank you. I had lots of fun in Michigan. You got it, Sally. All right, everyone. So last few words. I think, um, you know, that should be it. And let, I'm going to look at one last time at the questions here at the, uh, or at the very bottom of the comments, see if there's any questions. Once again, I just want to thank all of you. Uh, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to post a short little video on the main painting with Jesse Page where I thank everyone who joined in. And I'm going to say, hey, guys, please share your paintings below. So in the comment section, you're going to be able to put your picture in there, okay? So uh, when you're done, whether it's today, tomorrow, the next day, please find that post. I'll try to pin it to the top of the page so it's easy to find, and then you can just share your picture there. Everyone like, loves to see what everybody else creates. Even if you feel like you didn't do a good job or you're not super happy with it, please don't stress out about it. Part of the process, part of the art journey is you eventually kind of get to a point where you don't, not that you don't care what other people think, you're always going to care a little bit, right? Especially if you want your paints painting to be appealing. But once you get over that fear, you find that you kind of get to another level where, where you're almost relaxing a little bit more when you paint. Getting over those first kind of hurdles where you share your piece with the world and, you know, you kind of get over people criticizing it. I promise you, I've yet to see anybody jump on any of the posts that I make around paint and uh, people where people share their stuff coming in and criticizing anybody's painting. The most thing you're going to see is people liking your stuff and enjoying and being happy that you shared. So please don't be shy and share your painting with the rest of us, okay? And then um, be on the lookout for more of these events on the Painting with Jesse page. Like I said, I'm going to try to come on here 
and do these at least once a month regularly throughout 2022. I was about to say 2021. Uh, 2022. So, uh, you know, make sure you're following the page. Share the page with your friends and family if you think they'd, uh, you know, like to follow along and um, do a little art from time to time. And if you're more interested in becoming a little more serious about your art, uh, again, keep the Finding Your Brushstroke Painting uh, exclusive art group here in uh, Facebook in mind. We do drawing, we do art, uh, you know, painting, we have tech, uh, technical classes, uh, Q&A sessions, and a lot of com uh, camaraderie. So, you know, keep, keep that, keep our little group in mind. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think this is where we part <laughs> and say goodbye. So thank you again for joining me and I will see you all very soon. And where's my, where's my uh, end live button here? Give me one second, folks. I'm looking for my button on Facebook. There we go. End live video. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have an amazing rest of the day and rest of the weekend. I will see you all very soon. Thank you to all of you that sent stars. I really appreciate it. Love it. Love it. All right. Bye-bye.